Hey guys, welcome back to Furniture Flipping Teacher. If you're new here, my name is Lauren and I am a full-time kindergarten teacher who is flipping furniture to earn money to pay off my student loan debt. In today's video, I am going to be doing a commission piece for someone who reached out to me and they want me to flip a chest for them and they're gonna turn it into a coffee table. I have been not so patiently waiting for my Dixie Belle paint to come and it finally arrived today she picked a color from the Dixie Bell website so I was able to order that and it just came she chose the antebellum blue and I'm excited that she's coming and that she'll be able to see and make sure that this is the color that she wants and I also got the fan deck of all of the colors and this will be great for my future clients if they ever want to see a color I have it right here they are on their way to come and drop off the chest and I can't wait to get started. So she and I had kind of talked about colors so I have it laid out for her. The antebellum blue in my opinion is a little bit more green in person than it maybe was on the website. So I'm gonna let her choose and solidify that this is the color she wants. I do also have a darker navy blue which she kind of mentioned she may be a little bit more interested in. So we'll just see when she gets here. And then also I have both of the options for the stain, we have Dixie Belle's Voodoo Gel Stain, water-based, and then we have their No Pain Gel Stain, oil-based. So I haven't decided which one I'm gonna use and she won't really be choosing, but I just wanna have the options out here um, and what I'm gonna use on the piece for her. All right, they're pulling up, so let's get it unloaded. We've got the final decision here and she decided to continue on with the antebellum blue and I'm excited because I get to throw a little color on this chest and then she also graciously brought her flooring a piece of her flooring because this is the color that I'm gonna try to match as well as possible for the top of the chest so I'm gonna be sanding it down and restaining it I haven't decided which Dixie Belle stain I'm gonna be using I'm either gonna use the water-based stain voodoo gel stain in tobacco road or I'm gonna be using the No Pain Gel Stain from Dixie Belle in Espresso. We will see uh, the color difference and how each applies later on when we get to that step. I was excited that I was able to have the materials here on hand so that she could see them and confirm that that was the color that she wanted. I'm feeling a little bit more prepared for this commission piece than I did last time because last time I was a little bit unsure on the color. The fact that I was able to have it here in hand for her to be able to see and hold and imagine really helped. So what are some things that you guys do in order to make sure that you and your customer are on the same page when you are going to be doing a commission piece for them I'd love to know so comment down below for pricing on this chest for commission pieces again I like to take into account the amount of time that I think that I will be spending on this now this is a small piece but there is going to be a little bit of work that needs to be put into it such as sanding cleaning and all of that stuff so I want to make sure that I am getting the most out of my time and getting paid what I would like to be paid per hour. So I settled on a price of $200 with her and I got that because I was gonna spend $50 on materials and then the 150 would cover the amount of time that I will be spending on this piece, which I am imagining to be about six hours. I am ready to get started on this piece, so let's get to cleaning. 
All right, so it is time for cleaning. So I'm gonna take my Dixie Belle White Lightning Cleaner. I'm just sprinkling about a tablespoon in because I have about a half gallon of water. Always use gloves because this is a chemical based cleaner, TSP. So I'm gonna mix that up. You really wanna make sure to get all of the dust and dirt off because we're gonna be painting and staining, so we need that to have something to adhere to. And we would rather it adhere to the piece of furniture than the dust and dirt that can come off. For right now, I'm just gonna focus on the outside, and once I'm all done with everything, I will clean the inside as well. And side note, it is super nice outside. As you can see, I am outside of the garage, and it is in the evening and it's still 59 degrees out here. So I cannot wait for more of these days consecutively and not freezing my butt off out here. You wanna see the dirty water? This is why we clean. With an 80 grit, I'm gonna sand down the top because I wanna get it all the way down and smooth out the finish because I'm gonna be staining it. And then on the bottom, I'm just gonna do a scuff sanding with a higher grit of sandpaper. I have gotten a lot of questions about this mask and it is linked down below in the description. I love it because it still freshens the air, blocks out the dust. You don't have those big giant filters on your face. So this works out really well and there's a filter inside there. So I probably need to change mine out soon, but it's working great. Okay, I'm gonna wipe down all of the dust and I already went over it with a 120 sanding block. So this is gonna be ready to stain once I get all the dust off. Okay, so I just finished up dusting and now I'm gonna grab my stain from Dixie Belle. It is the no pain gel stain. And then we are gonna figure out how to apply that to just the top. Remember they want an espresso color, which is a darker color stain for the top. And that's gonna go with the customer's new, um, newly remodeled living room. All right, so this is gonna be my first time using Dixie Belle's no pain gel stain. And this is their oil-based one. I In the beginning, I kind of talked about maybe using the water-based, but I just think to get such a good pigment, a darker pigmented color on the top, I'm gonna go ahead and use the oil one. It says to use a clean, small cloth or foam brush. I'm actually using an applicator pad from Dixie Bell. Then just wipe it on, leave it on for a little bit, then wipe it back with a lint-free cloth. I've never used this before, so I was expecting a bit more liquidy because that's how regular stain is. But this is the gel stain, so it's more thick than normal regular stain. On the directions, it says to work in small spots, so it says no more than two by two feet. So I'm just going to start with this side of the top and then we're going to go from there. Another thing I've got to be a little bit careful of is not getting it onto the bottom. I'm going with the green of the wood and I'm kind of shoving it in those little creases or cracks in the wood. So now that I've got this section done, I'm gonna go back with a lint-free rag that I just got off Amazon and 
wipe it away. We are going for a dark color and I'm actually already loving how this is turning out. If need be, we can always come back in six to eight hours and darken it up. But from the looks of it, we won't need to do that. I recommend using gloves when you're dealing with oil-based things, especially because obviously being oil, it's not really gonna come away with water and soap. So using gloves is a great addition. As you guys can kind of hear, maybe have seen in the background a little bit, our neighborhood is beginning to get a little bit more active with kids running around, cars passing by, all that good stuff, dogs barking. So bear with us, but we love our active neighborhood. We love all the kids around. So you might see some kids in the background, but you know, it's getting to be the better weather. Spring, summer is coming. So it just puts a smile on my face. All right, so this kind of sucks, but there is water damage on the top of this, and I knew that there was water damage, but I didn't really think that it was going to affect the stain. Um, but if you look and see kind of right here, there's a spot, and then right here, there's a spot. That's just water damage. So we're gonna see how it dries, and if I need to darken those areas up um, later on a little bit, I'll do that. They already knew that there was water damage, so I'm probably gonna message her and just say, hey, this is how the top is looking, and is that okay with you? Really the only other way to go would be to paint over it. I'll be messaging her here in a few minutes to see what she wants to do going forward. Okay, I contacted the customer, and I showed her a picture, and I said, it has that water damage. I didn't think it was gonna affect it, but it ended up affecting the top and how it looks, uh, and it truly does not look the best. So what i told her is that i have an idea and then if that idea doesn't end up working the worst thing that could happen is i will have to paint the whole thing the same color my idea to continue getting a dark top is actually to paint it with burlap and then to use the voodoo water-based stain to cover over it and to kind of make that stained effect so that's what i'm going to go ahead and try and so since this oil-based stain is completely dry it's actually been drying for 24 hours it shouldn't really affect the burlap at all uh, since this is water-based again you don't really want to mix the oil-based and the water-based but since this is completely dry it should be all good so what i'm gonna do before i put the burlap on is i'm going to paint with dixie bell boss in the clear coat to just make sure that i get all that oil stain locked in there so it doesn't end up popping through when i paint the lighter color burlap okay so this is the clear boss from dixie bell which is blocking odors stain spots and bleed through so it's all going to be blocked by this boss. This is the clear boss, so it's just going to kind of go on a little bit white, but then dry and clear. All 
bosses on, it's gonna dry before I put the first coat of burlap on it. I wonder if... Do you think I would be able to put the oil-based stain right over top of the boss once it's dry and the boss would seal the water spot? Question mark. I'm using the espresso. So since I'm running into this problem and this little hurdle, I'm talking to Brush by Brandy. She's actually a Dixie Bell representative. I am reaching out to her so that I uh, make sure that I'm doing this correctly. So shout out to Brush by Brandy. She's really helping me out. I know I've said what I'm gonna do, but since I'm talking to her, I might actually change it up again. But while the boss is drying, I am going to take my Dixie Mud. I'm gonna use the white today. And I'm just going to make this so that it is, this is some peeling veneer. And since I'm gonna be painting it and not staining the bottom, it's okay if I go ahead and patch that up so that it looks like a flush look. I'm gonna do that here and over here on this side. So Dixie Mud, I've used the brown previously, but I like the white as well. I love Dixie Mud because it's so like workable. I mean, it's like a paste, but it's not too hard. And so it goes on really easily, but then it smooths out and then you can sand it back after it hardens. I'm just gonna make sure that I get all that in there, even it out a little bit here. Don't be afraid to use your fingers a little bit. It's probably gonna dry hard on my pants, but oh All right, all the Dixie mud is on, so that's gonna dry. And we're still waiting for the boss to dry and we'll be back in a little bit. All right, so another new plan, uh, thanks to Brush by Brandy, I am going to do another coat of boss to again block that stain and that water spot in. And then I'm gonna put some no pain gel stain that I used underneath here. And we think that after a couple of coats of that, we are going to be able to get a stained look still, but this boss will block in the water stain so that won't pop through. It does need about it says six to eight hours on the can of no pain gel stain but we're gonna be waiting a little bit longer just to make sure that it soaks in and i don't know how many coats that's gonna take but we're gonna apply one tonight and we're gonna apply one tomorrow things happen and you go through issues that come up come across on projects and i want to get this right because it is for a customer especially so that's what we're gonna try and we're gonna see how it turns out Alrighty, the Dixie mud is all dry, so I'm gonna sand that down. And there is a little bit of yellowing kind of popping through the Dixie mud, so I wanna be sure to block that in. I am going to be putting boss on the lower half of the chest as well, just so that we don't have any yellowing popping through when I put the color on the bottom. So there was a pretty deep gouge down here. There were two layers of veneer that peeled off. So as you can kind of see, it's very uneven still. So I'm gonna do another layer of Dixie mud here to smooth that out. And I kind of like to make it a little bit taller than the actual gouge. That way when I sand it off, it will be even and flush, especially on this second layer. All right, I'm gonna put these back in to this baggie because just in case I need to do another layer of the no pain gel stain tomorrow, I don't wanna be using a whole bunch of applicator pads and using the same one is 
very productive. So I'm gonna keep that and then the no pain gel stain is gonna dry on the bottom part. We're gonna put a layer of boss because again, I don't want that yellow popping through when I paint the whole base. And before I apply anything to the bottom, I'm gonna open up the lid. And I am going to be taping around this little rim because I do not want to get any paint along there. So I don't want to get any boss there either. So I'm going to do that before I apply either one of those. I also don't want to get any paint or boss on the keyhole, so I'm gonna tape that up as well. And the last two spots where I'm gonna do tape is along the back side because we're keeping the cedar on the back and I don't want to get any paint on it again, so I'm going to put some tape over it. All right, and I noticed that there is a panel on the front that is just lifted a little bit, so I'm going to take some wood glue and push it in there, and then we're going to clamp it. So since it's a pretty small spot, I got this cardboard. I'm just going to put some glue, and we're basically just going to kind of shove it in there. Then we're gonna clamp these to hold tight. And then since it's clamped, that will dry like that. And once it's dry, we will be able to take the clamps off. So while the clamps are on and the glue is drying and the Dixie mud is still drying, we are gonna take a break from this. And then once those are all dry, we are going to do the Dixie Bell Boss on the bottom and then get to painting finally in a beautiful color antebellum. All right, we are on day three of working on this. It's taken a little bit longer, but we are finally on a roll. So the Dixie mud is dry down here where I had to do another layer. So I'm gonna sand that down. So now that is all nice and smooth. And also my wood glue dried up here. So we're gonna take the clamps off. Boom, good as new. I am still working on how I'm going to get this stuck down. Thinking we're gonna have to lay down the chest on its back and then put something on top of it to kind of glue that down but I wanna get the boss on here before we do that. So again, the boss is just going to seal in any color on the chest so that it doesn't pop through when I use the chalk paint. Okay, so while that boss is finishing up drying, the top is actually also ready to put the clear coat on. So it was able to dry for that full 24 hours and it actually ended up, because we put that boss on, it actually ended up eliminating that water stain and then we still got a really nice wood stained finished look which I'm really excited about and I know the customer will be too. So as you can see, there's really no more water damage that you can see. You can still see the wood in uh, the wood grain 
in the top even though it's a darker stain i really think this will go great with their dark floors i am going to be using gator hide as a top coat gator hide is the toughest top coat hence gator hide you know it's really tough this is why i'm going to put it over the top of this chest because again the customer is actually going to be using it as a coffee table so it's going to get a lot of traffic it's going to get cups sat on it and so on so i really want to make sure i'm probably even going to do two coats of this gator hide to get utmost protection Okay, so for this little booger of a spot that I can't clamp because the clamps won't fit there, um, I am going to be taking some wood glue and then I'm going to be taking a bucket of stain that's hopefully going to be heavy enough to weigh it down so that it can stick and that it can dry. So I'm going to take my trusty piece of cardboard and kind of shove it in there with some wood glue just like I did at the top. Try this. Okay, weighing it down a little bit. I think I'm gonna go get a couple more cans of paint or stain to weigh it down even more. We got a summer project of painting the deck, so that's why we have all this stain. But right now, it's gonna weigh down my wood and I'm gonna grab a paper towel to wipe back some of the glue. Other than that, this needs to dry for quite a while. And we're gonna hope that that helps out. All right, it got dark out, so we moved back into the garage, but the wood glue is dry and it did get stuck down there, so it is no longer a gap. So that makes me very happy because the paint will then cover the rest of that. Now that the boss is also dry, I'm gonna take a sanding sponge from Dixie Belle, and it's a very, very, very fine grit sand sponge. And I'm just gonna go through and smooth out the boss, and that way I can get a smooth finish on my paint. And then we're gonna flip this up, and we're gonna get started painting. Now I'm gonna bring Neiman over here, and he is gonna help me flip this up so that we can then get to painting on the base. And the reason I wanna flip it up is because I need to open the lid and that way I can get right up to the edge of the chest and we're not missing any spots or getting paint on unwanted areas. All right, the tape is still on there all nice, so. My favorite part, I get to paint. All right, so like I said in the beginning of the video, this is the color antebellum blue that our customer picked out. So I'm excited to get some color going. I am going to pour some into a container. Finally got a mister as well. So this should make the process a lot easier of thinning the paint. I'm gonna go ahead and spray some in the, in the paint. Not too much. I'm also gonna be spraying some onto the brush to keep that nice and moist. We're gonna get started. Sometimes you can also spray the piece itself as well as the brush and the paint just to again make that smooth out the paint. These little ridges, we've got to make sure that we get in and around all the edges. Be really careful to not miss any spots because that would definitely look silly. So when we're painting with Dixie Belle's chalk paint, 
you want to try to keep going in the same direction every time so you want to go I like to go with the grain of the wood so that is up and down of this side okay I might go side to side for a little bit but then I'll end up going back over it up and down even though I taped off the edges, I'm still being really careful around those edges. Alright, the first coat of the antebellum blue is on there, so it's going to dry. So again, this is the floor panel that she had given me to kind of color match. And the top is a bit darker than the flooring, but that is because we had to deal with that water damage. Um, and also, it'll be just fine. This will actually be on a rug, too, so the color isn't that much different. I think she'll be really pleased with how the top ended up being, and we were able to salvage it without having to paint the entire thing. So that's what really made me happy because I wanted to be able to please her. I can't say thank you enough to Brush by Brandy for helping me out. Always reach out to people uh, like me. Be sure to reach out to me if you have any questions. I'll try my hardest to help you. But it never hurts to ask. The worst that can happen is we don't respond or someone doesn't respond or we don't know. But generally, I will always try to help you as much as I can. All right, I am going to use the hemp howdy do hemp seed oil from Dixie Bell. If you can see right here in the back of the chest, there are just some scratches. Who knows what it actually is, but I'm going to use some hemp seed oil to go ahead and try and get rid of that. And then I'm just going to kind of rub it into the raw wood and kind of buff it in there. And it'll not only get rid of those marks, but it'll also be able to shine up the wood on the outside. But as you can see, they are disappearing right away. The first coat is dry, and I have realized that Dixie Bell has such great coverage with their paint that I only need to go back and do some touch-ups of spots where I missed because one coat was plenty of paint. One common thing that I hear a lot is that Dixie Bell's too expensive, the Chippy Barn's too expensive, blah blah blah, it's too expensive. But guys, the quality of paint is what you pay for. And I'm not knocking any brand because I like to utilize all of them, but things like Rust-Oleum paint, it's not going to get you as far as the same amount of something, say, like Dixie Bell. Now those are comparable because they're both chalk paint. Um, Dixie Bell is a little bit on the pricier side, I will admit, but you are going to get far more projects painted with the same amount of Dixie Bell paint as you might get for Rust-Oleum. So keep that in mind when you're choosing your paint. It might pay off in the end, literally, to go with a bit more expensive paint in the long run than to just choose the cheaper paint because it's cheaper at that moment. Like I said, these little crevices a little bit tricky, but we just got to make sure that we get in all of them. Don't want to miss a spot in there. And unfortunately, go figure, I kind of ran into another problem again. Not a huge problem, but where I had put the wood glue on the bottom here in the front panel, it ended up actually coming back away from the chest itself. So I'm going to use a different method than wood glue because obviously that's not going to go down any farther so i'm just going to take a little bit of cold and i am going to apply it to seal off that little space we're going to get a little excess going on here i'm going to have to sand it back and kind of paint over that one more time but this again is going to be better than having it exposed like that it just truly didn't look finished that crack was not looking good. 
looks a little bit messy right now but that's gonna dry overnight i'll lightly sand it down do one more little touch up of the antebellum blue and then we'll be ready to put a top coat on all right it has dried overnight and i'm gonna sand down where i had caulked it and after bringing it out into the light i'm noticing that the chest has a few spots that do need to be touched up so i'm just going to go ahead and give it a whole nother light second coat and then we'll be ready for the top coat i'm also just going to go ahead and sand down one little light coat over the whole thing because that'll be able to smooth out the paint strokes and we'll get less and less brush strokes I even put my paint in a plastic bag this time because I didn't want to pour it back in the container and it kept overnight and the paint is still liquidy. I also did that with the brush. So we're going to do a light coat. So that caulk cleaned up really nice. It really um, covered that crack, which makes it just look way more finished than it did before I did that. So I'm glad that that was able to be fixed. Okay, and the second coat is all finished up. It's gonna dry now, and then top coat time. Okay, top coat time. I am going to be using the clear coat in the flat, and that just means that it's basically gonna dry like the paint dried, flat matte finish. And the reason we still wanna put this on though is to protect it from it getting um, too much wear and tear over years of being used. I haven't actually tried out the flat yet. Again, I use a foam brush when I am doing the clear coat because I just love the way that it goes on smooth. I'm gonna get right up to the edges and I'm gonna go one way back and forth okay while the top coat is finishing up drying i'm going to go ahead and remove the tape because it's good to remove it even when the top coat is a little bit wet still that way it's just a little bit easier removing it i'm going to do it nice and slow so i don't peel any paint that nice crisp line Ooh, that looks good That looks good, that looks good. I'm so glad I taped it and didn't risk just like trying to get around it because that probably would have turned out so well seeing as how clumsy I am. Look at that, boom. And when that top coat dries all the way, this thing's gonna look really nice. All right, so this has been able to dry and I'm so pleased with how it turned out. The flat was a great choice on the finish of the bottom. And the last thing that I've got to do is clean up the inside of it and then it'll be ready for pickup. I'm gonna grab my Howdy Doody hemp seed oil to buff out the inside just a little bit where there's a few scratches and then it'll be good to go. This is all done. We're ready to take some after photos.
Again, we aren't selling this per se because it's for a customer, but we want to take some after photos just for you guys and to have a portfolio. Um, I highly recommend taking those before and after pictures because the transformation is always really fun to see in the end. And this finished product is a huge difference from the before. So I'm excited to put the photos side by side. All right, this piece is all finished. I love the way it turned out. It gave me a headache yet again. It was worth it in the end to have the final result um, pay off. And all of these Dixie Bell products were used. I'm gonna kind of do a little recap because I know it got a little bit confusing at the beginning. I know it did for me. I had to remember what step I was on, what paint I was using, what primer I was using, blah, blah, blah. So. In the beginning, let's see if I can even remember, I sanded down the top and then I straight away put the no pain gel stain, which is their oil-based stain on top. And then after that dried a little bit, there was some water damage popping through. That wasn't looking good. So I reached out to Brushed by Brandy and she recommended that I just put some clear boss over that no pain gel stain after it was dry. And then once the clear boss was dry, that would kind of block out that water stain. And then I put another coat of the Espresso No Pain Gel Stain. That ended up eliminating the water stain for the most part, as good as we're gonna get. Um, I'm happy with it. Um, and then the next thing that I did is I put the Gator Hide on the top of the coffee table because I wanted to make sure that it had its utmost protection on there and that is Dixie Belle's heaviest top coat. It's gonna give you the most protection. The third thing I did was I kind of gave a scuff sand down here. I had to use some wood glue and some caulk to put down that paneling, but I finally got all that squared away. I put some boss on the bottom as well so that yellowing wouldn't pop through the color. I gave it two coats of the antebellum blue, which was a lovely color. I'm really glad that she chose this color so that I could do a little pop um, instead of my normal neutral colors. That was fun to do a, a brighter, fun color. And then the final step was to use the clear coat in flat to just cover and make sure that that bottom is also protected and it gave it a really flat matte look and I think that really complements the kind of more satin finish on the top and then of course the cedar inside I took some howdy doody hemp seed oil and got rid of some of the scratches and blemishes vacuumed everything out and here we are it is finished and she is about to come I'm super excited oh it looks lovely this looks wonderful thank you this looks just like good we talked about. yay i'm glad <laughs>
because it kind of took a little bit longer than you thought it was going to. It happens to the best of us. And like this video down below. Follow me over on Instagram at Furniture Flipping Teacher, where I post more behind the scenes things, updates on my stories, where I can inform you guys of some different things that's going on, whether it be a video that's coming out a little bit later than usual or just project updates. I would love to have you over there as well. I'll see you on the flip side.